Welcome. Uh, my name is Karolina Kędziora. I am a lawyer. I am a president of Polish Society of Anti-Discrimination Law. It's a non-governmental organization of lawyers working with the um, problem of discrimination in Poland. I'm honored to be asked to give an opening lecture at the pilot uh, project Culture of Respect. Uh, today I will talk about how discrimination can be demonstrated in the academic community. This is the knowledge I want to interest both students and workers of your university. Uh, as a lawyer who has been working for 20 years to protect human rights and to prevent uh, discrimination, I will discuss the fundamental provisions of Polish law, which uh, prohibit discrimination in the workplace and in the area of education. During the lecture, I will refer to examples that illustrate uh, real situations. Uh, I hope that this will make the lecture interesting and more understandable for you. Uh, now I want to show you a short uh, presentation with uh, concretes. I hope you will find it interesting. First, uh, I think it's worth very shortly to talk um, about sources of discrimination. And uh, that's why I want to show you definition or maybe not definition, but to mention about stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. Stereotypes refer to beliefs and expectations. Prejudices relate to the general emotional attitude, and discrimination describes the behavior that is shown to a group. Uh, to illustrate uh, this, what you can see now, I want to show you uh, another uh, interesting um, instruction. It means that when you believe in stereotype, stereotype that foreigners are hostile, uh, you don't like them. It's about prejudice. And the result of this, uh, when you have some kind of power, uh, there is a visible relationship of power, uh, is discrimination. This is act of discrimination, this abuse. Uh, so you treat these people worst. Uh, we call this mechanism of discrimination and it can be a story about different groups of uh, society. It can be about foreigners, but it also can be about women. It can be about um, um, sex orientation uh, or other grounds of discrimination. Because when you want to talk about discrimination, the very basic, very important thing, it's uh, ability to point ground of discrimination. We are talking about discrimination when um, um, there is less favorable um, treatment because of personal character characteristics, uh, so-called protected characteristics or other reasons such as employment conditions, for example. These characteristics and reasons are called grounds for discrimination. Uh, in Polish uh, uh, law, uh, we have um, um, two main uh, legal acts uh, which are about uh, ban of discrimination. One of these is labor code, and this, there is, we can find uh, open catalog of um, protected grounds of discrimination. And uh, people who can use uh, labor code are people employed, uh, for example, on a university under a contract of employment. And here are mentioned um, um, grounds like sex, age, disability, race, religion, nationality, political beliefs, trade union membership, uh, ethnic origin, religion, sexual orientation, employment for fixed or indefined period, employment in full or, or part-time, and others like, for example, state of health can be uh, used as a ground of discrimination, and I know such cases. Um, another um, uh, legal act is um, uh, law on the implementation of certain European Union legislation on equality treatment. I know it's long uh, 
uh, name uh, and shortly I, can, I will uh, call um, this act uh, the Equal Treatment Act. And here it's interesting, um, especially for students and uh, people who use uh, vocational trainings. Actually, uh, according with um, um, with European Court of Justice in Luxembourg um, case law, uh, it's this very often it's the same. So the protection against discrimination uh, possible uh, with, in, with which we can uh, fight with discrimination in court uh, can be based on not only on race, ethnic origin, and nationality, but other but also other grounds like sex and religion or belief, disability, age, and sexual orientation. Uh, also, this uh, law is important for, um, for workers on university uh, who work on other um, uh, contract than employment contract. Um, so it can be civil contract also. Um, uh, about this, um, uh, vocational training. Uh, I want to show you this very important judgment of the Court of Justice of the European Union and I will read it. It's very important how uh, you, we should understand uh, this vocational training actually like normally studying on a university. And interesting in this case was that the case was about uh, veterinary, veterinary medicine and students who should be protected in these cases was important uh, in the same way um, like other students uh, and here was mentioned the ground of nationality, uh, ground of uh, discrimination. And here we can uh, see such a statement. Any form of education which uh, prepares for a qualification for a particular uh, profession, trade or employment, or provides the necessary training and skills, therefore is vocational training, and thus is so far as the conditions of access to such training in concert falls within the scope of the treaty. University studies uh, constitute vocational training, not only where the final academic examination directly provides the required qualification for a particular profession, trade or employment, but also in so far as the student in question provides specific training and skills needed by the student um, for the uh, pursuit of a professional trade of employment, even if no legislative or administrative provisions make the acquisition of the knowledge um, prerequisite for that purpose. So that's why uh, we should uh, treat this protection um, against discrimination for students uh, on university uh, wider. Um, another thing is that um, university as an employer and provider of education uh, should be responsible for um, many relationships uh, which are available in this academic community. It can be about uh, relation between supervisor and inferior, people who work together on the same positions as well, person uh, employed by university with, uh, who contact with student. So it, it, could, be, it could be a lecturer or also the worker of uh, university, another one, and uh, between students. Uh, so when there is a violation between students and there is a complaint to the university that there is any violation, like for example, sexual harassment, the university uh, is responsible for this situation because the situation is among two students of this uh, university. Uh, we can find in our uh, provisions both uh, this uh, labor code and this uh, equal treat, uh, treatment act um, I said before five forms of um, discrimination. It can be direct discrimination, indirect discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment and instruction and encouragement of discrimination. Now, very shortly, I try to explain, explain you uh, what uh, this uh, definition means in practice. 
direct discrimination take place when one of person is treated less favorable uh, far favorably than another uh, is has been or would be treated in compar comparable situation on any of the grounds uh, important you don't need to have a feature that you are discriminated against there are two situations when you don't have to uh, have a ground um, on which you are discriminated. When a person is associated with a person who has a specific characteristic um, and when a person is treated less favorably due to a misassignment of a characteristic. There are two situations when you don't have this uh, characteristic um, but uh, the discrimination uh, still exists. First example, a student is not admitted to the exam on the same basis as other students because the examiner has been informed that the student's life partner is Egyptian. So um, the complaint um, uh, would be fulfilled also in situation when this student is an Egyptian and that's why uh, there is a worse treatment, but in such situation it's also possible. And another situation, a student who has participated in the Pride Parade, uh, such uh, parade for LGBT uh, rights, uh, is therefore treated less favorably by a new university employee who saw him uh, in television coverage of the event. Uh, I had such a case uh, some years ago and it was interesting because the court uh, didn't ask my client about sexual orientation. It was not important in this case. Um, indirect discrimination. It's uh, another form of uh, discrimination. Take place when apparently neutral provision criteria or practice would put person having a, a a particular sex, nationality, religion, or belief, uh, particular disability, age, orientation, uh, sexual orientation at a particular disadvantage compared with other persons, unless the provision, criteria, or practice is objectively justified by a legitimate aim and the means of achieving that aim are appropriate and necessary. So this definition is much more complicated and we talk about neutral, uh, apparently neutral provision or criteria. So it seems to be everything fine that all students or workers are equally treated, but in practice there is discrimination. Uh, I have very interesting um, example for you. A student who is a person with disability uh, ask university authorities to adjust the time of the written examination to uh, his mobility comp capacity by giving him an additional 60 minutes to write each exam. The answer is negative. In response, university refers to general provisions on the uh, principles of examination, indicating that if student wishes to continue the study, he must adopt the uh, adapt the, to the requirements for all students. So, uh, seems to be equal treatment for everybody, but there was no this conscious about. Um, uh, this difficult situation of a uh, person with disability and no understanding of this specific situation of person who uh, has problem with um, this um, um, apparently uh, neutral provision which was discriminated for uh, this person in this particular situation. Uh, harassment is another form of uh, discrimination uh, when unwanted conduct related to any of the grounds takes place with the purpose or effect of relating to the dignity of a person and of creating an uh, intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment. Uh, very important is that the action may be an uh, isolated incident and may not be intentional. Uh, that's what we know from uh, the case law of Polish courts. And um, because this uh, uh, behavior conduct um, 
uh, is connected with dignity of individual. That's why it's very, very important that um, the person must demonstrate any objection. So um, it must be um, obvious for uh, people around uh, that there is objection. Very important is that there is no requirement for a specific form of objection. Some, sometimes it's a situation when persons start, start to cry or, uh, I don't know, leave uh, the room, uh, behave uh, in a way that it's obvious for people around something is wrong. This person don't, uh, doesn't agree for um, uh, such a treatment they can observe and example i have also uh, the lecturer in the class referring to the marriage institution comments there are certain communities which are demoralizing society and uh, encouraging legislation legalization of de uh, deviations two students clearly show their indig indignation and one of them gets up and says that as a homosexual person, he feels humiliated by such a statement. Um, consternation, some students start to laugh, some decide to leave. The lecturer doesn't not rea react. And uh, this is a situation uh, when there was objection of one of students who get up and uh, very directly say about his um, uh, sexual orientation and there was no reaction. There was no, I apologize you, I didn't mean um, this part of our society, people um, which are LGBT people here, no explanation. This behavior shows that the person uh, had uh, such opinion about uh, homosexual uh, people that this is kind of deviations division and show it publicly in a, on a new university during a lecture. So this is kind of harassment based on sexual orientation uh, in this case. And it's also very important to know that uh, harassment based on skin color, nationality, uh, skin color, nationality, ethnic origin or religion can also be criminal offense in Poland. We have article uh, 257 of our penal code, um, uh, and we can read it here. Um, whoever publi um, publicly insult a group within the population or a particular person because of his national, ethnic, race, or religions affiliation, or because of his lack of any religions uh, denomination, or for these reasons, branch the personal in availability of uh, another individual shall be subject to penalty of deprivation of liberty for up to three years. Another definition is sexual harassment. Uh, the definition is uh, very similar to this one I showed you before, but um, in this situation we have unwanted verbal, nonverbal, or uh, physical conduct of a sexual nature occurs with the purpose of effect of violating the dignity of a person, in particular when uh, creating an uh, intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, or offensive environment. This is very important uh, topic uh, because uh, I have such experience. We have many cases which are about sexual harassment on uh, Polish uh, universities, but there are not many case law about this. It means that people still uh, afraid to talk about these situations and yeah it's uh, quite uh, difficult to deal with our society. Uh, we had such, some such cases and uh, a few of them, the reaction of our society was very severe for a victim who was judged about her uh, behavior. And yeah, it was much more um, aggressive toward this person, not to the perpetrator. And, here is also very important um, objection. Uh, so a person who feels less favorably treated must demonstrate objection. It's the same like uh, with harassment. There is no requirement for a specific form of objection and objection should be uh, understandable for people around. Um, 
it's very helpful to have a list uh, from the Fundamental Rights Agency. Um, uh, in uh, 2014, uh, the agency defined behavior that uh, is considered to be sexual harassment. Of course, it's open catalog of the situation can be sexual harassment. We have here uh, offering dating, uh, pokes on social media like Facebook or chat online, questions about private life, uh, notes on appearance, uh, desirable views that cause fear, giving gifts of sexual nature, exposing himself, herself, uh, forcing to watch pornography, emails of or text messages of a clearly sexual, sexual nature, touches, uh, huggings or kissing, sexual jokes. So uh, think about these uh, examples and uh, decide if you have already such experience um, with such situation. I have uh, an example here. Actually, it was my case. Uh, I had such a client and we tried to deal with the university about the situation and the result was very poor. I can see, and my client she didn't uh, she didn't she didn't decide to go to the court uh, because of fear of the reaction of uh, public. Um, so that's uh, it's a little bit sad story for me. Um, a student of the first year values very much the achievements of the professor and is very pleased that. Um, and uh, she was very sorry pleased that she's uh, admitted to his class. Uh, in a short time, it turns out that the professor begins to recognize her by asking uh, for her opinion during the class or by asking for help in collecting research materials. It's a great honor for her, uh, she tells parents about this. After a few weeks, she gets message on her email box from professor. The message is pornographic. In true case, there were two messages. After this incident, the student appears in the class only once. She behaves differently than usual. Professor asks if she had received her message, his message. The girl runs away crying and doesn't appear at the university anymore. So, in my opinion, there was enough objection uh, from uh, this student girl and the behavior of the professor of course it's kind of sexual harassment and as you can see he used his stronger position because you know he was a very important person very known person and uh, very at the beginning of the story she felt very special that he can be helpful for uh, such a very important professor and then happened this situation uh, very, very stressful. And uh, yeah, I think this girl was very shocked. And the truth is that in true life, uh, she has some uh, medical problems with herself after this situation. It was very strong experience for her. I, I think influenced her uh, life, unfortunately. But after a few years, uh, we again start to have contact with the student. She's now now she is an adult person, and she observes the career of the professor. And she thinks if there is any about this, if there is still any uh, legal possibility to do something with this case. Um, yeah, because it's very strong still experience for her. And now she feels uh, stronger. Sexual harassment as a crime. Uh, yeah, it's very important to have this uh, um, labor code and this equal treatment act, but we have also penal code. And here, very important two articles, there are more, but these two I want to show you, article um, 197 and 199. The first one, whoever, whoever by force, illegal treat or this, um, this subjects another person to sexual uh, intercourse shall be subject to the penalty of the deprivation of liberty for a term of between two and 12 years. And another one, whoever abusing a relationship of dependence or by 
taking advantage of a critical situation subjects such a person to sexual intercourse or makes him her submit to another sexual act or to perform such an act shall be subject to the penalty of deprivation of liberty for up to three years. And last uh, form of discrimination I want to talk about is instruction and encouragement to discrimination. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it must be connected with also the grounds which are protected uh, and should be treated as a discrimination if happen. This can be based on both uh, communication made directly and on the consent or tolerance of certain behaviors. And also I have example for you. Um, Kevin is one of the few of Nigerian origin in the college and the only one in the group. For some time, he has noticed the worrying behavior of other students. As it appears, they're whispering, laughs, look, laughs looking away. Uh, when asked, uh, other students do not respond to him. In one class, when no one knew the answer to the question asked by the lecturer, one student pointed at Kevin and said, let's Negro answer. Students laughed. The lecturer laughed too. So it's a terrible situation which should be treated as a, a harassment based on a, a color of skin and uh, or nationality. And uh, it's terrible the reaction or lack, or actually it's this very obvious reaction of the lecturer who together with students uh, discriminate uh, the students, one of student Kevin. And yeah, it's obvious it's uh, discrimination, but also it's obvious that this is even kind of instruction of discrimination for the others, for students. From the position of lecturer, stronger position, uh, this uh, person shows to the others that it's fine to do like this, to say like this, and to discriminate uh, people uh, like Kevin. Equal treatment is not always discrimination. There are many, um, there is a list, especially in the labor code of situations which are unequal treatment, but which are not uh, discrimination. And I want to mention especially one um, such uh, exception. Uh, when we have unequal treatment, but it's not discrimination, it's positive action. Specific measures to prevent or compensate for disadvantages linked to any of the gr grounds of discrimination. So the university can conduct such positive actions for um, group of workers, employees or group of students uh, about which uh, about uh, the group uh, have a knowledge that uh, there are many disadvantages in our society to live like a person who, for example, is uh, LGBT, uh, belong to the LGBT community. And uh, it can also it can be about nationality, disability, and such a solutions, such a actions which are uh, dedicated especially for this group are allowed even if uh, um, other students can not, not use these um, solutions of, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, um, passing exams. Um, responsibility of the employer provider of education. It's very important part um, that you don't have to prove discrimination before a court. There is very, very important in our labor court and the act of uh, uh, equal treatment in these two acts, there is very specific um, burden of proof uh, shift on the worker or uh, yeah, this provider of education. So um, in anti-discrimination cases, the burden of proof is partially shift from the complainant to the respondent. Uh, in this situation, we talk about university. It's the employer, provider of education who must prove that there were objective reasons to apply discriminatory treatment. It's sufficient for the employee student to indicate only facts from which it can be 
presumed that the discrimination has occurred. This is the rule of European Union standards and it's very important because uh, in this kind of cases, the employee or student uh, normally is in worse position, weaker position uh, in a court. That's why the workers and um, another um, institution like university do uh, huge effort to prevent discrimination. Uh, because if there is any proceeding, any case in the court, the situation is quite difficult for the university. That's why it's better not to have such um, situations. Um, protection against any and, uh, adverse treatment by the university as a reaction to a complaint or to any legal proceedings, it's also very important rule because, um, yeah, uh, it's uh, about avoiding revenge that I complain for discrimination and then uh, I have problems with this. I uh, communicate to the university that uh, I felt there was sexual harassment during lectures and then I have problem with uh, exam, for example. It's not possible according with uh, our law and it's, also, it's protection not only for a victim of discrimination, but also for a person who support victim of discrimination. And uh, what can you demand? Both the employee and the student can claim compensation for discrimination. And it's very important that compensation uh, compensates for material damage, which can be lost to remuneration for worker or uh, to, uh, to, uh, to fees for students. And also it's about um, uh, intangible damage. So it can be harm. Like for example, when we talk about sexual harassment, uh, it can be no any material damage, but the the person can feel that uh, her or, or his dignity is violated. Uh, so we talk about harm and compensation um, because of this. And uh, there are situations um, when we cannot use uh, uh, labor code or uh, when, you, when we cannot use uh, our penal code or this uh, act of equal treatment. We have still civil code in Poland and protection of persons, personal rights. Also in claims for the protection of personal rights admissible both as an additional way to appeal apart from the allegation of discrimination on the basis of the provisions mentioned earlier, uh, but also in a situation where these provisions do not apply uh, for example, in a situation where discrimination occurs against a student or student uh, due to the state of health. Uh, this um, ground is not mentioned in these uh, acts. Most frequently violated persons' rights uh, are health, freedom, dignity, freedom of conscience, name of pseudonym, image, privacy of correspondence and others. But uh, my experience is that um, um, the most the most frequently used uh, um, personal rights in cases which are about discrimination is dignity. And very important thing uh, before you go to the court, give the university a chance to solve the situation, to support you, uh, just feel a complaint. And uh, I believe that this uh, uh, meeting which we have now it's very very obvious sign that this academy this university want to prevent discrimination that's why i believe it's really worth to use the commission to tackle the problems of harassment sexual harassment and discrimination against students and doctoral students which you have on your uh, university and there is also for workers anti-mobbing commission for university employees and also it's very, um, uh, there, there is an email address, the email for reporting uh, inappropriate behaviors at the university you can use. So yes, I think it's worth, it's very important to give a sign to 
um, university that there is something wrong, that you need any help and uh, yeah, and uh, even if you, the situation is really difficult and you think about the court first, it's really worth to uh, try uh, to talk with um, university as an employer or as a, um, as a yeah, the place you, um, which is important for you as the community of students. Thank you very much for your attention and um, you can invite our website of Polish Society of uh, Anti-Discrimination Law. I think a lot of um, things you can read it here in English. So yeah, that's it for now and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.